I've been editing videos and creating courses full time for nearly 4 years so it makes sense that I have a decent rig and a productive desk setup. Also I love watching these kind of videos so I've decided to give one my own shot. In this video I'll share my clean minimal desk setup, the PC build I use for editing and the simplest cleanest equipment I use to get the job done. Everything I show will be linked in the description where possible. Also at the end I'll show you a little hack I use to keep my cables tidy without drilling holes into my desk. First let's start with the desk. I bought this desk from Wayfair about 3 years ago for about £350. It's made by Simple Stuff and I really love how big it is the chunky white legs and the wooden top. Looks really modern, contrasts nicely with all the black equipment I have. It's 160 centimeters long, 70 centimeters wide, so it's pretty big and fits all my accessories perfectly. I'm not sure what kind of wood this is though, maybe you can tell me in the comments. Next, let's look at the PC that I edit with. This PC is a custom build from Chill Blast, which I got about two or three years ago and I've made a few upgrades. I love the clean look with the glass window. Let's take a look inside. It's got an AMD Ryzen 3900X 12 core processor, a GeForce 3060 GPU, 64 gigabyte of RAM on two 32 gigabyte sticks clocked at 3400 megahertz, a 512 gigabyte Seagate Fire CUDA NVMe M2, which I use for my OS and programs, and a two terabyte Samsung Evo SSD, which I use for storage. I love how the processor has a little bit of RGB and the case came with a bit of purple lighting throughout, but nothing too crazy and I'll never get tired of turning this thing on. This computer is an absolute beast and I can render pretty much anything I need in After Effects with no issues. I've seen a lot of setups with a slick MacBook on the dock and I love how minimal that looks but unfortunately I use Premiere Pro and After Effects nearly every day and that software isn't quite optimised for Mac yet so I like to use my PC. I do have a MacBook Air M1 which I use for writing scripts on the fly or in coffee shops but I still prefer the Windows interface for editing and daily use just because that's what I'm used to. Also bonus feature, I love this little air gun for cleaning my PC. I used to use condensed air but sometimes that stuff spits fluid and this just blasts air away and it's got a little brush to clean in the gaps, very satisfying stuff. Next we've got the monitor, I've got a Huawei Mate View GT 34 inch monitor, probably just butchered that name of that company. I managed to pick this up on sale a while ago for about £350. It's a widescreen monitor, 1440p resolution, it's got a built in soundbar, it's very sturdy, it's got an adjustable stand which you can easily flick up and down with your finger, feels really high quality. I don't know a lot about monitors to be honest but everything I've read about this monitor says it's got excellent colours and it's got two HDMI ports on the back and a little USB port which comes in handy. But I can tell you from experience the soundbar is okay in a pinch but doesn't come close to a proper set of monitor speakers which we'll get to shortly. On top of the monitor I've got a BenQ light bar, you've probably seen these everywhere. These help you illuminate your desk setup and makes it easier on the eyes in the night. It's got a colour temperature control, brightness control and an automatic setting where it picks what's best for the environment. To be honest I just keep this setting on, it seems to go warmer the darker it gets so you've got less blue light. And I looked at other light bars but what I read about this was the counterweight can fit pretty much any screen which as you can see works fine on my monitor. There's a big heavy counterweight on the back and it just sort of sits on top. And to be honest, now I've got this light bar, I can't work without one. Next, let's take a look at my speakers. I used to DJ, so I love good sound, and these speakers are actually a set of near-field monitors, which are best suited to music production, really high-quality studio monitoring. They're Adam TV5s, and probably come in about 150 quid each, 150 pound. They are exceptionally high-quality, they absolutely thump. You could probably have a little house party with these. And they come with adjustable frequencies and volumes on the back. In fact, I only have the volume one quarter of the way up on the speakers, then adjust the rest on my sound card. They're plugged in via XLR to my Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 sound card. I really like the look of this shiny little red sound card on the desk. It's nice, adds some colour and contrast. Then with the volume about halfway up on the Focusrite, these speakers go as loud as I'd ever really want them, but you can go way louder. You could probably DJ to like 20 people with these speakers alone. Overkill, yes. Would I change them? Absolutely not. As far as lighting goes, on the back, I've got a simple LED strip, plugs into its own socket, adjustable colours, nothing out of the ordinary here. Don't have a full on Google Home lighting setup yet. Nothing out of the ordinary, but adds a nice little accent to the back of the desk. I usually keep this on blue or purple which I feel says cool or creative. For the microphone I absolutely love this stunning Shure MV7 USB microphone. It's the baby brother to the SM7B. I've had tons of microphones 
and this is the perfect condenser mic, it doesn't pick up too much background sound like other mics, looks beautiful, incredible sound quality out of the box, and it's completely plug and play, it works with a micro USB to normal USB or USB-C, so you can use it with a Mac or PC, plus amazingly it comes with both cables straight out the box. It's got a little touch bar on the top with adjustable input and headphone controls, and I bought this with a little stand so I can set it up quickly use it with my MacBook if I leave the house or whatever. You really can't go wrong with this beautiful microphone. For headphones, I'm using a set of Audio-Technica M40X headphones, super comfortable, had them for years since my DJing days, incredible sound quality, they can get a little bit irritating if you use them for hours and hours, but I think that goes for any headphones. I plug these into my microphone when I'm recording scripts so I can actively monitor the sound quality just like I'm doing right now. Mouse and keyboard, I just use a Microsoft wireless set that I bought years ago. I think it's sleek, the keyboard has a low profile, the mouse is heavy, glides across the screen, doesn't look too officey, and it all just works fine with my setup. I've never had a problem and changed the batteries once in about two years. I am thinking about getting a mouse pad though. What do you guys think about mouse pads? Is it worth it? I just don't want to add anything unnecessary to my desk. Cables. Now you're probably thinking, Ryan, you must have a ton of cables under that desk. And you're right. But you can't really see them because I've got an eight plug extension cable tucked away under the desk on a rack which I've stuck to the bottom of the desk with heavy duty sticky back Velcro. This meant I didn't have to drill holes in my desk. Plus the Velcro is incredibly strong and can support up to seven kg. So there's a little hack for you. If you want to easily hide your cables, you don't want to drill your desk. I can't remember what it was called. It was like Gorilla Velcro. If you search heavy duty velcro you'll find it stick it to the bottom and you can just stick your under tray on and then it's really easy to take off as well you just have to give it a bit of a pull last but certainly not least i've got a nice little wooden cup holder here where i keep my pens and a solitary notepad to keep life nice and simple all in all i love this setup but if there's anything i change i'd probably go for a standing desk try and get one 180 centimeters so 20 centimeters wider so the speakers have a bit more room or if I had space that allows it I get monitor stands to go either side I did have stands before but they took up too much room however when I move somewhere more permanent I'll probably add them to the collection thanks for watching really enjoyed making this video would love to know if you would like me to make more like this if you liked it if you enjoyed it subscribing commenting liking all helps me out massively and i appreciate every like every comment and every subscribe also let me know what did you like what didn't you like and hopefully in a few months when i move house i'll have an updated setup to share with you so that's it thanks again and i'll see you in the next one